Good luck. Have fun. Call or text. 216-578-1007. 800-348-1007. Our apologies to second shifters. All right, here we go, everybody. Let's get to work. This is no way to start your day. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Great band here called In Visions. Maybe getting to them on Saturday night. We do a metal show here on the Buzzard. It's called Two Hours to Midnight. And we will have 120 minutes of nothing but metal for you on Saturday night. Me, Corey Roddick, Pat Butler, all three of us throwing in stuff that we want to play for you. We've got local music from a band called Centerless this weekend. Brand new stuff from Tomb Mold. You into Tomb Mold, Bill? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Canadian metal. They just dropped a brand new album. Uh, I'll play some Helmet for you. They're doing the Grog Shop on Saturday night. Get a dip in there. And then we throw in a bunch of classics. We'll play some Megadeth, uh, throw in some Black Sabbath, Paradox from the 80s. Uh, so a bunch of brand new stuff. Your requests. Don't forget about that. Send us stuff you want to hear. It's 2HTM at WMMS.com. We also have a Facebook page. You can leave messages there as well. And I always post the playlists uh, week to week. If you're in a local metal band, send me your stuff. I always like hearing what the local people are doing. So that's Saturday, 10 to midnight, uh, here on the Buzzard. Cedar Point, <laughs> because you needed some joy. Man... You're going to be standing in line for six hours of your day. All the lines, that's how long it's going to take. Don't matter if you buy the pass. Everyone's buying the pass. Come on. Cedar Point for joy. 80% <laughs> of the people there look freaking pissed off, yeah. man. No one's happy at Cedar Point. Come oh, on. God, Owen and Willoughby kills me. That dude is all, he's got some takes, boy. He's always leaving messages. I love him. That dude makes me look like Kimmy Schmidt. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, look, I look downright optimistic mm -hmm. next to Owen from Willoughby. He's like, come on, man. I love it. Yeah, Cedar Point. Hells yes. Maybe I'll get my ass out there. I guess if we were on Kelly's Island. That would have been a better time to go, but... But looking across the bay there, boy, it looked like they were having a lot of fun. I've had a lot of people, once I said that we were legit looking into buying a golf cart because it looked like a really, you know, when we were zipping around Kelly's Island on ours, it was a fun way to get around. And because they are street legal, you can have them in your own community. And I, I got a letter from Lindsay, who's one of our bureau chiefs down in Charleston, South Carolina, where that plane just crashed. Wasn't that Charleston? Then we have the guy, what, what the the dude that uh, the screaming guy, Didn't that F thirty five go down there in Charleston? So? Yeah, <laughs> love that guy. Anyway, she's one of our bureau chiefs down there in Charleston, and she said my husband is a helicopter paramedic, and he has flown a whole lot of people with serious oh, he flies when he doesn't do. He doesn't, he doesn't revive try, helicopters. He doesn't try and revive no. helicopters. No, he, he has to do uh, he has to do CPR in their gas tanks. Uh, he's a helicopter paramedic, and he has uh, he and his crew have flown lots of people with serious head injuries, and people falling off their golf cart. Well, and I told her I was like, we were taking our time around Kelly's Island. It was fun, and he, but there were people zipping around, boy, and you know people are out there and having fun and drinking and whatever. So we were just taking our time, but. Even if you put the pedal to the metal, you're going like maybe 30 miles per hour, which again isn't five miles per hour. It's fast. Yeah, 30, I mean, and if you take a turn too fast, you know. I, I, so I, I I take your point, but she was like, uh, they can be very dangerous. Everything can be dangerous, but I do appreciate the heads up. She said, "There's a patient at the medical facility where I work who is paralyzed from a golf cart accident." Well, yeah, it's uh, her postscript. On a lighter note, I was thinking about some other idioms that you guys can ask Pound Cake. Ooh. Maybe we can all learn a little bit. 
I think he's still getting a winner. That is one of my favorite parts of the idioms thing is I don't really know the answer either. The whole point is I like how Poundcake's brain works in these situations when he doesn't know and he will come up with something that I would never think of. We like to hear how he works in a iron hot is the best like i almost like his version of it more than where it actually originated we, we should that po- you guys didn't think that it was burning someone in the face with an iron <laughs> like i always thought that that's what it was <laughs> well because i strike I, while the iron's hot is a yeah, old yeah. maid mad at her husband yeah i guess i thought of it as a blacksmith would yeah but then i'm older You know, back when I was a kid, Bill, we were still smithing our own arms. We had to hammer out our own irons. Uh, How about mind your P's and Q's? Now, see, mind your P's and Q's, though, there are a couple of different explanations for this, and I don't know which one's true, which is precisely why we should be transcribing Pound Cake's explanations and putting them into the public record. Absolutely. So in a couple hundred years, he, his legacy will be confusing people as to whether or not his explanation is the right one. So am I supposed to tell you what I think it is and then where it or, or where it originated from? Is yes. That, so I, mind your P's and Q's for whatever reason I always thought was mind your manners. Um, well, that's what it means. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think it came from a kid was like probably acting up at dinner, pushing the peas around, and then his mom just slapped him. She pushing like, the, oh, P-E-A-S. Yeah, peas, like peas that you eat. And a kid was yeah, but it's calling, not mind your P-E-A-S and Q's. I, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> you never seen the phrase? No. I uh, letter P's and out. Q's, yeah. Again, I don't know what the... Uh, I always heard it was pints and quarts, like they would tell guys at the pub, mind your P's and Q's. But then I also heard that it was when printing presses started. Yeah, that's what P's I thought. P's and Q's, because they're reversed, they were like, mind your P's and Q's, so they come out in the books properly. Right. Is that That's what you heard? That's what I... Well, my, my ex-wife used to have like an old timey printing press so she would actually have to like do that <laughs> she'd actually have to mind her p's, p's and q's when she would uh make uh different uh printed out things i would love to and again it's playing the long game but i would love to insert pound cakes explanations into the wikipedia pages of all of these um, explanations. Because it's going to be, it's it's largely the realm of history buffs and people are like, well, some people believe it's this. And then just in the middle of it, we have a mother told her son to stop pushing his peas around them. Now, Pancake, that does explain the peas. What are the cues? The cues is the quit. The quit? Like, quit. <laughs> quit. <laughs> Mind your peas and quit. See, that's brilliant. I love it. Mind your P's and quit <laughs> doing that. Quit playing. Mind your P's and Q's. Q's. Okay. You better quit while we in public. I'm going to whoop your ass. Well, these are just a couple me. that Lindsay sent me from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Costs right. an arm and a leg. Oh, that was someone stealing in like a, a bazaar and they, you know, had to cut the arm or the leg off. That's they, easy. They what? Someone was stealing in a bazaar, you know, back in one of those countries where they yes. where they cut your arm off if you steal. Yep. So it costs an arm and a leg. So this tomato cost me an arm and a leg because I stole it. Caught, right. Yeah. It's very, very expensive. Correct. But where do you think it started? I don't know. Where do they cut arm and legs off? Like I. I <laughs> oh, you think they literally cut arms and legs off people? Yeah. That's what uh. I thought it was like. I. What did they do to Saudi Arabia or like where is Aladdin <laughs> base? Agraba? <laughs> Street rat. Yeah, I don't know what the origin is. Um, oh, it originates from after World War II in America. Many servicemen lost arms and legs. Therefore, for some, the price of the war was an arm and a leg. Mm. It was a high price for anyone to pay for anything. And so it became common usage to mean expensive. If that's true, that makes sense to me. Mm. Cost That war cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah, all right. So it wasn't shoplifting? No. From a Not shoplifting. Mm-hmm. Nope, it was storming the beaches mm-hmm. at Normandy. Pot calling the kettle black, more, way, more than one way to skin a cat. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go. Let's, uh, let's go through these. <laughs> she just sent me a couple. <laughs> 
Mm. Pot calling the kettle black. You've heard that, right? Yeah. Right. It's like um, belittling someone even though you have your own faults. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, what do you think that the origin is? Um, pot calling the kettle black. I imagine it's probably something really racist back at the old, back in the olden days. Um, I don't I don't know. Nothing comes to my mind for that one. Again, this is another one that has a bunch of different. Some people say it goes back to the 1600s. What I had always heard was when pots and kettles were next to fires, a fire would burn them both black. Right? Like they're heating their water and so they were right next to the fire. And so it would make both pot and kettle black from being scorched by the by the flame. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's too literal. Yeah, I, didn't of, know I don't that know. One. I never knew what it was called. I just knew it was like, uh, like contradictory. Like, how can you judge me? Look at you. <laughs> have you? Is that a phrase? Have you ever used that phrase? No, I just like don't judge me, bitch. Don't judge me. Where I pull out my vault of receipts on you. I'm telling you, we got we got to write these down and put them in those Wikipedia pages. He's got a bitch. I got receipts. Yeah. Other people say it comes Let's make from it a the coffee 20, table book. Yeah. <laughs> Other people say it comes from the 21st. It either came from the 1600s or the 2020s. <laughs> More than one way to skin a cat. That came from skinning a cat. There you go. He nailed it. Yeah. That came from skinning a cat. Yep. And a guy goes, you know, that's not just the only way to do that. That's another one that supposedly goes back to the 1600s. Um, but again, you know, phrases... What does that, it mean, though? Like, what is... More than one way to do something. You can still reach the objective by doing it more than one way. Mm-hmm. There have been another phrase. There's more than... There are more ways to kill a dog than hanging. An old English proverb. So maybe people just copy and pasted it over to the cat, but... Uh, more ways to kill a cat than chalking it with cream. There you go, from the 18... 1800... I, I don't know. But anyway, thank you, uh, Lindsay in Charleston, South Carolina. Started with a warning email to me about purchasing a golf cart. And then her little, hey, throw these at Pound Cake and see what he thinks. Golf cart. A golf cart. That's <laughs> golf right. Cart, yeah. yeah, that's why I was so uh, flummoxed in my Google searches because I was like... How much is a golf cart? And it was, like, it was like, did you mean golf cart? And I was like, I've been misinformed. I just listened to Pound Cake. I thought it was a golf cart. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to take a break here. If uh, you want to send a text for something, 35192 is how to do that. If you're listening on iHeartRadio, we'll talk back button. You want to leave messages there, and we'll be back. And the winner of Scene Magazine's Best of Cleveland, Best